Good evening. Good evening. What's up? Happy Friday, everybody. Good Friday. Happy Easter to everybody. Matt Clinton, shouting out to you right now. Matt, what's up? Thanks for joining, everybody. Uh, Craig, down at the beach for Easter. Excellent, excellent. Good day, mate. Peter, what's up? It is a good Friday <laughs> for a guitar workout. I like that. Peter, good job. Rusty, my friend, Jersey Red, what's up? Good to see you. Craig's uh, Craig's here as well. Yes, Scott, ready for another great lesson, hopefully. Uh, thanks for joining. Glenn B., all right. Elias, what's going on? Rusty, what's up? What's up? Welcome, everybody. Uh, for those of you new to uh, these Friday sessions, I urge you to uh, open up the description, expand the description below this video. We've got some tabs for what we're going to run through tonight. A little more of an electric guitar focus, but as always, you can transfer all of this stuff to acoustic, okay? So equally well on both guitars. Uh, a little more electric guitar geared, but uh, for the most part, you can play this stuff on acoustic. So do not shy away if all you have in your hands is an acoustic, okay? Uh, Pat Rogers, what's up? Welcome, Mel. What's going on? Jim Gregory, the best part of the week. I'm happy that that's the case. John, my friend, what's up? Good to see you. And Chad, all right, welcome back. Excellent, Steve in NH, what's up? Welcome, welcome. <clears throat> Appreciate everybody tuning in, as always. Uh, so yeah, if you refer to the tabs, we've got, uh, and Arthur is in the house. Art is in the house. All right, welcome. Welcome, sir. Okay. Let's give it a little bit of volume here. Uh, usually start out. On these, uh, this is a rhythm guitar style sort of focus. Uh, just some ideas from different genres, uh, of course, applicable to all genres. Usually, uh, there's skills here that uh, just general skills that uh, will up your guitar playing. As always, with these examples, uh, hopefully, you'll find them inspiring, useful, uh, and uh, take these examples and experiment, uh, work on them in the coming weeks. Uh, th certainly this week and, uh, you know, just try to make them your own, try to apply them to lots of different uh, situations, different genres, different chord progressions, all that kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, excellent. HH. Welcome. Welcome. Good to see you as always. Ra Raymond from Puerto Rico. All right. Welcome. Igor from Mexico city as always. Thanks. King 50 from North Nevada. What's up in Denver. We got Zane. Thank you for joining. Nikki, the dog is back. Good to see you. All right. Chad, yes, uh, question about the axe. Uh, this is a, a parts caster. Uh, this is an Ash body, Jazzmaster body. Uh, they got off eBay, uh, but it's got the Telecaster electronics in it, Telecaster bridge, Telecaster electronics, and a, and a Tele neck from Warmoth. Uh, sprayed paint some stuff on. I think it turned out pretty good just for a spray bomb, right? And uh, plays great. I'm loving it. So, uh, yeah, you'll be seeing it uh, here and there. On the sessions here, uh, always looking for an opportunity to pull it out. Excellent. Well, thank you, Chad. I appreciate that. Uh, what else? Hector, San Diego in the house. All right. Welcome, welcome. Okay. So uh, exercise one, we usually get started with some sort of a strum, uh, sort of a pop rock sort of strum. This is actually sort of Beatles-y. This is from a Beatles song called I Feel Fine. Uh, just a short little chord progression, but uh, actually a strum pattern that we haven't really covered here. And we cover lots of different strum patterns, so I thought we'd throw this one in because uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, so we're going to start off with the open G, uh, sorry, bar chord, root six, bar chord G. So you're barring down on the third fret, adding the fifth fret of the A and D and the fourth fret of the G which is actually in caged terms, is actually the open E shape, right? Moved up three frets. So now this becomes your fret, uh, sorry, your index finger becomes the nut, right? On an open E, so we call this the E shape, but it's movable, so you can move that to any chord you, de you desire, right? And so let's look at, ha have a look at this uh, strum pattern. So uh, your first clue is going to be in the top staff, where you see a collection of notes uh, with one flag on them means an eighth note. And with no flag, it means a quarter note. Okay, so what we're doing is we're starting with an eighth note and then the next strum is a quarter note. 
So on the first beat of the bar, we're doing a downstroke. Uh, okay, so first of all, um, when we're talking about quarter notes and eighth notes, that means that our strumming is going to be down ups, one and two and three and four and is gonna be our motion, okay? And we wanna try and keep that motion. That keeps us honest and keeps us in time. So you, you like to have this motion going even if you're not striking the strings on every down or up, right? So this is a case where we're just gonna do the first down right into the next up, but then only do the ne next couple up strokes and then end it off with a down. So that's gonna sound down, up, 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 down. And then you cut it off because there's a rest at the end. That's what that little uh, sort of looks like a seven symbol at the end of that bar means an eighth note rest. So we're gonna cut that chord off right after we strum the downstroke, so. Okay, now notice I'm keeping this going even though I'm not strumming on those downstrokes in the middle of the bar, right? Just upstrokes. Down, up, 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 down. Cut it off, okay? So work on that nice and slow and don't even worry about the chord progression yet. Just work on holding one chord down and getting that strum properly, okay? And loop, you can loop as many bars as you need to nice and slow. So it'd be something like this. Down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. You down, up, 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 down, okay? And hopefully by doing that with the repetition, what's gonna happen is you're gonna start to feel a lot more comfortable with it to go a little bit faster, right? So. That's where we want to get, right? And so we add the chord progression in, and what you can see is that each bar of a, is a different chord, but it has the exact same strum pattern, okay? So that makes it a little bit easy. Once you've got this strum down a little bit, then it's like, okay, now let's introduce the chord changes, right? So it's going to be G. The next chord is going to be B minor. Now this is a root five bar chord, movable bar chord and talking in cage terms, that's basically an A minor moved up two frets, right? Everybody see that? Here's an open A minor and I'm just moving it up two frets and adding my finger where the nut would be, right? So that's your movable minor bar chord shape with the root on the fifth string. Next, we're gonna go to a C chord, all right? So this is uh, a C, third fret of the A, barring down on the fifth fret of the D, G, and B. Not worried about the top string. Just sort of curl your finger to mute that a little bit. What's up, Dennis? Glad you made it. Okay. We're still on uh, example one, third bar here on the C chord. Okay, and speaking in cage terms, right? This is actually an A major shape. Moved up three frets. So you can kind of fret it that way if you'd like, and that way you can actually get the high G note in the chord. But it's a little bit of a tough grab, especially when you're going quickly. So I usually just either use my ring finger or my pinky, whatever is the most comfortable, to bar down up to the B string, just making sure that we're not getting that high E string in there, unless. See, I've been doing this for a long time, so I can curl my bar finger. I can actually get the G note up top on the third fret. Everybody see that? Look at that weirdness right there. So that's what you can stretch. You can <coughs> kind of expect that after you spend lots of years on the fretboard. Your fingers will start going uh, all sorts of different directions and make some uh, cool little chord shapes possible, right? What's up back at you, Ander? What's up, Ander Tube? And uh, Western Australia, good day to Keith. Having breakfast. All right. <clears throat> breakfast lesson. I love it. Welcome, welcome. If you're just joining, expand the description. There's a, a link to a tab document that we're going through. And then our final chord shape, the fourth bar, is going to be a D dominant seventh quarter, D7. Fifth fret of the A string, fourth fret of the D, fifth fret of the G, third fret of the B string. So just going from the A to the B string. And you might recognize this shape as C7. The open C7 moved up two frets. It becomes a movable shape as long as you're not doing any open strings, right? So I, I use that shape all the time. We'll see it again. 
uh, one or two times uh, coming up in some of these examples. So let's just sort of plot out these chords before we introduce the strum. So it's going to be G, root six bar chord, to B minor. Now check it out, economy of motion, okay? We don't have to reset our fingers and replant them because we've already got this general shape going, right? The fingers are sort of spread out in the same position. You just have to move across the strings onto a different string set to get that minor shape, okay? So keep that in mind. It's a good idea anytime you're looking at a chord progression before you dig in, what kind of economy of motion can you have, okay? That's not a very tough move because your fingers can maintain this shape and you're just sort of moving it down one fret and up a string set. Okay. Then up to the third fret, the C, okay, a little bit of a different shape. And then this is the tough one, right? Because we're going to from bar chord here to the D7 shape, which is a little bit of a different shape. So that's going to be a tough one. Okay. So we'll just work that a little bit. Okay. Now that you got sort of the lay of the land, let's put the strum in there and see what we can do, okay? We do something like this. Okay. I have a tendency for my uh, wedding ring finger to kind of touch the top string. And that's kind of what you heard there. I always forget to kind of push forward a little bit make it a little bit cleaner there, right? So up to speed, maybe. Okay, there you go. So uh, that's sort of the idea behind how to attack some of these exercises. Maybe sometimes you wanna separate out what's happening. Look at the chords separately, look at the strum separately, kind of just mess around with a little bit and get the lay of the land before you tr attempt the whole thing, all right? It's a really effective way to practice. And also I should mention in this particular strum pattern, it's actually convenient that right at the end of the bar, you've got an eighth note mute. So that actually gives you some time to reposition to the next chord, right? Because you can cut off the chords. Cut off and then move in that time to get to the B minor. Right? So. Uh, that's a good one. All right. What else we got here? Uh, Chad's having a beer between strums <laughs> from Fort Worth, Breakfast of Champions. I love it. Excellent. It is TGIF, right? James, what's up? Good to see you. Thanks for joining. All right. Exercise one. That's uh, just getting us in with a little bit of a, they call that a syncopated strum. Uh, for those of you who are joining us sort of for the first time in that some of those strums are happening on the off beats or the ands, sort of in between the beats, right? If you're thinking one, two, three, four, a lot of those strums are happening in the middle, okay? So they call that syncopation. Rui, what's up? Good evening, back at you, glad you're here. HH, when do things sort of finally come together in your head and on the guitar? I see all these people progressing and sounding good, but I still sound so beginner-ish. Well, keep the faith and uh, listen, as long as you are working, uh, and practicing effectively and repetition, 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 and being honest about playing slow enough to be able to execute what you're trying to do. And you give it enough repetition, you'll, you'll start to see an increase into uh, being able to play it faster, be able to play it smoother. And you need to trust in that process, okay? Um, one of the things that gets frustrating with guitar is that sometimes making that next leap to feeling like you, you're like, okay, I feel like I, I'm kind of doing this better. Sometimes that doesn't happen for a while, but if you're practicing effectively and still working on it, hopefully every day or as often as you can, it's going to go slightly. You're going to, you're maybe not going to notice that progress, but every once in a while it jumps up a little bit. Okay. And that's what we're pushing towards is getting that sort of that little, that quick little uh, ascent up to the next plateau, okay? So as long as you're practicing it the right way, as long as you're doing the right things uh, effectively during your practice routine, trust in the process, it will come, okay? Absolutely, I hope that helps. St stick with it, please, stick with it, stick with it. We need you, keep going, all right. 
Exercise two, uh, pop rock progression with an embellishment. So we sort of talked a little bit about uh, sort of this Hendrixy kind of stuff last time we did uh, this. Uh, this is something similar. So I'm going to play through it once, and uh, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. So it starts on a C chord, going to a D chord, and then an E minor. So that's our progression, C, D, E minor. And just doing sort of uh, some little moves here. All right, I think I added one more strum there. Let's try it again. That's the way it's supposed to sound, all right? So let's have a look. These are sort of just some common moves that you can make instead of just going, you know, okay, looking at a chord chart and going, okay, C. One, two, three, four, D. One, two, three, four, E minor. Two, three, four, one. Right? This spices it up a little bit. Add some movement, some texture. Starting on our C uh, bar chord root five. And then this move. Okay, this is a classic move, and I think we talked about this a little bit when we went that Wing Cries Mary exercise a little while ago. Okay? We're sliding up on the A string from the 5th fret, moving to the 7th fret. And then you're going to grab just the 5th fret of the D and G. So you're still... You're moving positions, but you're still basing your index finger off the top part of the same chord shape. Okay, does everybody see that? And now we're sort of playing off of a C major pentatonic note. With the third, okay, because we're moving up the C major scale. The second, sliding to the third. And then playing on sort of the power chord part of this chord. Okay, and once again, we've got like a little uh, rest there, so we can reset. And now we're gonna do something similar on the D chord. Okay, D chord is the same shape up two frets. Okay. Something a little bit different here. So first parts, back down to the ninth fret of the A and then We've got the ninth fret of the D and the seventh fret of the G. Just a little bit of a different melodic sort of thing. Okay, another way to kind of do this is to make that a ha quick hammer on and pull off. Of Actually, it's just a hammer on. Okay. Or you can just do the straight note as well and just strum the straight note, but it sounds a little bit, gives it a little bit of that sort of country Americana sort of rock thing. Okay, if you do the hammer on, that's the hammer on to the ninth fret of the D string, right in those last two, two uh, eighth notes. Okay, and then you're in the right position to just grab this E minor chord. So again, that's the B minor shape or the A minor shape moved up to the seventh fret. And then we got some syncopation. Okay, so we're hitting a quarter note. And then on the second beat, we're going to rest. So we cut it off. And then the in-betweens once again. Now this time, I'm not doing upstrokes. You could do upstrokes here. Uh, let's see. Uh, but I was using all downstrokes on the rest of it, okay? So uh, I can do downstrokes if I wanted to. All right, so that's what that sounds like there. Cool. So we got some texture. We got a little syncopation. We got a little bit of riffing going on, adding to the chord. Now check out this move here. Uh, this is sort of a common thing to do on, with E minor. Uh, is you've got these three fingers up top, but you've got the bar down on the seventh fret from the A string all the way up. And it's cool to just remove those upper fingers and just sort of play an in-between chord. Now this is sort of like a D6 over E or something like that. 
uh, which isn't really that important. It's just sort of a passing chord that gives it some texture, right? And it sounds really natural and kind of cool, just kind of, you know, gives you a little bit of movement within the chord. I think it's pretty cool, right? So that's a good move uh, against the, uh, you know, not only the minor, but uh, you can come up with some cool sounds doing it off the major chord as well. Like, all right, so uh, this is what I mean by just sort of taking these examples and, uh, you know, playing around with them, like seeing what you can come up with and uh, create some other new sounds and some things that you're like, hey, I never tried that before. That's kind of cool. Put it in your back pocket, right? <laughs> There you go. I love it. Nikki the dog. The riff sounds good with any strum. I like that. Yeah. And mess around with the strums, whatever you want to do there. But uh, just these are all ideas to kind of be mangled and put it through the blender, right? Excellent. Excellent. All right. Cheers, everybody. Cool. Cool. All right. Exercise three, uh, arpeggiation. So uh, uh, the next three examples are actually directly from songs that I'm working on that I'm going to be filming for Guitar Tricks next week. Um, and this first one is a rather uh, challenging uh, arpeggiation progression. Uh, we've got some cool chords and some cool movement within the chords, <clears throat> and uh, it's a little bit challenging. So uh, let's see what this sounds like. I'm going to play through this. We'll kind of break it down a little bit. It goes like this. All right go a little bit slower so that maybe you can follow along with some of these chord changes right here. E minor seven, right? Oh, sorry. All right, so that's what it sounds like. And we'll go a bar at a time here and kind of break it down a little bit. It starts off sort of straight, straight, uh, straightforward enough on an E minor seven. Okay. So uh, this particular voice is going to be the second fret of the A and D. And then you got your pinky on the third fret of the B string. <clears throat> so you've got E minor basically, and you're adding a D note to it. So that makes it an E minor seven. <laughs> Nicky the dog, ding, 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 you got it. That's the song. It's going to be epic. <laughs> There's so much lead in that song. I've been working so hard on it. Anyway, it's going to be fun. Uh, but yeah, this arpeggi arpeggiated riff that's played throughout the first part of this song is uh, kind of tricky. Uh, so we're going to get the low E string, and you can see that's just a quarter note, and then we're going into eighth notes after that. So you got to let that go one and two and All right, so uh, that first strum on the low E, and then kind of let it ring out, and then you're picking up eighth notes. So then the D string, open G, and then just going to the top string and coming down each string. All right, so you see uh, in the next bar, we've got basically a C and a D, but it's a little more stylized. Uh, coming into this riff. Okay, so it's a little bit floaty sounding. Uh, the first part is going to the C power chord, the third fret of the A, fifth fret of the D. And you're gonna arpeggiate A string, D string, and then the open uh, G string. So you're actually doing a double G note right there. Same note. And then you're going to lift off your pinky and you're going to slide from the third to the fifth fret of the A string. And you're going to get open strings, open G, open D, and then you're going to have to pull your finger off the D string and get the open A. Okay? So. Like that. Then it's going to go to uh, your regular open C chord. 
And the first part of this is just pretty straight ahead. You've got the root note on the A string, and then you're going to pick the B string, G string, D string coming down. Then you're going to add your pinky to the third fret of the B string. Okay? And so you're adding a D note to that C chord and then picking the open G again. Okay, so. And then it sort of switches. Some pickup notes here, second fret of the A going to the open D. So you have to let go of that shape. Okay? And then, so now we've got the, uh, the D slash F sharp, okay? Uh, let's see. Scott, do you recommend the alternate picking when doing the rundown? No. Uh, something like this, you get playing it pretty fast. You generally go in the direction that you're going up and down the strings, okay? Uh, I didn't actually uh, write out the suggested sort of picking on this because it is kind of wide open. Like, however you feel, uh, feel it naturally, like you could alternate pick this whole thing. It would be difficult, but you could. Um, I would generally just go, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm just following the direction of it there. And then in that second bar, I'm kind of doing two downs and then an up. And then back on this one, you know, you kind of got to flow in the direction. So if you get with the, the root note here and then I'm coming back up. Okay, and then uh, third fret, all right, of the B string, open G string, you're kind of coming back up, and then it's a down up here on second fret of the A, open D, D over F sharp, which uh, Matt is asking, can we do a G flat on that, because um, I've never learned how to do a G or a G flat. Well, technically, Technically, you kind of can't, like, even though this note can be, just depending on what you're doing, like the musical context, the second fret of the low string can be F sharp, or you're right, it can be G flat, okay? That's what's known as an enharmonic note. It means it could be an F sharp or a G flat, depending on what key we're in, depending on what the musical context is. In this case, we're in the key of E minor, okay? So we don't have a G flat in the key of E minor, the, the two note in the E minor scale is F sharp, right? Because we're going from E to an F note. And in this case, it's F sharp for E minor. So this is definitely an F sharp that we're doing here. Okay, we've got a D chord up, uh, it's kind of a D power chord up top. And we're gonna leave the open E string ringing. So you got the root note as a downstroke, upstrokes on the B, G and D string, and then again, upstroke on the high string, third fret. And then a quick little, quick little hammer on from the open A to the second fret, and then grabbing the open D string. And then once again, that's a down up. Down to the E minor, okay? Open string, the, the root note, and then sort of a brush downstroke to do it. Okay, so there's a lot here. Um, go bar by bar and sort of get it under your fingers and put it together really slowly is sort of the, the plan of attack for what we want to do on this, okay? So one more time through, we'll move on. Here we go. Little, lots of meat on this one. So, uh, you know, if you choose to dig into this, it's a little bit challenging, but uh, it would be an awesome thing to kind of get your way through because uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, it's going to do nothing but help your chord changes and, uh, you know, kind of work on your picking and arpeggiation and all that stuff. Rusty, apologies for being so quiet and working at the church tonight. Right on, Rusty. Uh, no apologies needed at all. Excellent. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Nikki the dog, any ETA on G, uh, this going on GT? So we film stuff. We'll be filming next week, and then there's editing, and there's also transcribing. So it's usually could, uh, could be anywhere from two to four months from now. 
um, probably towards the end of the summer, if I had to guess, sometime in the summer, hopefully, if not early fall. Um, there's sort of, you know, we film a bunch of stuff and they, uh, there's a sort of a big chunk of a whole bunch of song tutorials that are getting worked on at any given time. So it's just when it comes out of the queue, right? We're just filling up the queue with songs. So uh, there you go. Excellent. I'm glad, uh, Nikki, uh, Nikki the dog, I'm glad that uh, you're digging that tune. It's really funny. You know, I grew up in Canada and uh, I, I'd never heard any Blackfoot before. Some of these songs that we do for guitar tracks, I'd never heard before. And I talked to a lot of you know, I live in the States now. I talk to a lot of people around here, a lot of guitar players and stuff. They all know this stuff. They're like, oh yeah, I love that song. It's like, cool. I've never, never heard those ones. So I'm enjoying kind of just learning them for the first time. How long have I been playing? Decades, decades, my friend. I've been playing a long time. We'll put it that way. All right. Exercise four. I think you're going to like this one, sort of the Stevie Ray Vaughan kind of thing. Okay. Uh, let me kind of play through this. I, so I've kind of did this in chunks uh, just based on what chords you're playing. So really the main riff, you just look at the first bar, you've got sort of a shuffle going, and then uh, it kind of sounds like this. I guess I should put on the neck pickup. Okay. <laughs> yes, HH, I know you are. Yeah. We didn't hear Blackfoot up in Canada, trust me. So there was tons of Canadian bands that we were into. So uh, anyway, this is the sort of classic Stevie Ray Vaughan shuffle approach. Uh, I think I've covered this a long time ago in kind of a different configuration, but uh, this one's really fun to play once you get in the groove. Okay. So what you want to think about is that we're doing eighth notes, but it's a shuffle. Okay. So when you think of the count, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, okay? Those are the notes on the downstroke, okay? But what's happening is the upstroke is closer to the next downstroke, which gives the groove a bounce. Instead of up, down, up, we're going down, down. And that gives us that shuffle, right? That's what gives us that vibe, that sound, okay? And so what's happening is we're sort of doing some muted strums. And actually, in fact, if you get going fast with this, you don't even have to really even mute the upstroke. You can just sort of strum the open strings. Okay, but what you want to do is clamp down back on it and cut it off to get ready for the next downstroke notes which in this case are on the low string. So you kind of cut that off like this. Alonzo, what's up? Happy holidays indeed. Okay, so you may, might want to practice this first where you're kind of nice and loose and getting that bounce going. Back and forth from the A note to the, to the G note, five and three on the low string, just. Then towards the end of the bar, we're adding in this other riff, okay? So uh, just barring down on the seventh fret of the D, D, G, and B. And then on the upstroke, doing the same thing, but the fifth fret of the D, G, and B. Okay, so that's how that's gonna go. So you put it together. All right, you start feeling comfortable with it, you can start adding some vibrato on those low notes. And then, of course, try to work up the speed of it a little bit. Right? Get that Stevie Ray Vaughan thing going. Now, you can go to the four chord. Uh, so that's the next bar that I kind of put in this. It's not meant to kind of go continuous. This is sort of meant to be plugged into a 12-bar blues form. So if we want to hit the D chord, we're just going to play the same thing up five frets from... 
up there up to the 10th and 8th fret, right? Okay. So it's just as simple as that to get to the four chord. You just move it up and uh, play the same riff, basically. Okay. And then I've got this little five chord riff that's a little bit different. And it's kind of challenging. Um, we've got to look sort of at the first two clusters. So what we've got are triplet eighth notes. That's sort of like the, the pulse of it. Now we're getting into the full triplets instead of just down, up, down, up, down. It's actually a triplet. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And we've got this E7 sharp nine chord. The Hendrix chord, 7th fret of the A, 6th fret of the D, 7th fret of the G, 8th fret of the B, against the open low string, and you're kind of, okay, kind of goes together like that. So you can see that it's down, up, down, up, up. A little bit slower. And then you put two of those together. Okay, a little bit of speed. You with me? How's it sounding? All right, is that a fun one? Hopefully we can get that. Once again, I recommend to be effective if you're kind of new to this sort of vibe. Take it in chunks, right? Just work on that first part. You know, the way I have it transcribed is to mute up top, which totally works. Okay? But you can also use the open strings too once you get it up uh, really fast. You don't even notice those open strings as long as you sort of clamp down on it, right? Cool, cool. Take it in little chunks. All right. All right, R&B time. So uh, here's another song that uh, I'm working on, a Wilson Pickett song for next week. And it's got some cool R&B sort of uh, R&B little riff, little R&B lick, uh, which is a textbook kind of thing. Uh, so I'm going to play this first little pickup lick and then get into the groove, which is repeated. And this is basically, this song is a vamp on an E7. There's actually no chord changes in this song. It just stays on an E chord. It's kind of like a, it's just this vibey kind of tune, right? So uh, start starts off with this little pickup lick that goes like this. Uh, whoa. Okay. One more time, a little bit slower. Okay, so uh, quickly, it kind of, you know, once you get this a little bit faster, kind of has that real R&B kind of sound to it. Um, playing out of, like I said, you know, sort of an e ma the, the key of E major a little bit. <clears throat> um, you're doing major pentatonic right here. Hammering on from four to six and then grabbing the fifth fret of the B. And again, sort of cutting that off. Okay. You come down a string set, you're still doing four and six, but you're landing on the fourth fret of the G. So, and then you're going to move that down two frets, two to four on the D string, getting to two on the G. And I'm doing a down up. You notice that I'm doing the down stroke on the lower notes, up stroke on the top one, and that sort of... Okay, and then the last one, second fret hammering on to four of the A string and grabbing the second fret of the D. So. And then we're right into the groove, right? So we've got, Sophia, what's up? <laughs> got the low E string for a quarter note. One, two. Second, the second beat, we're sliding into the fourth fret of the G and the fourth fret of the high E string. Okay, so this is a double stop or a dyad, as it's called. And specifically, uh, we call these this particular shape, uh, 
or it's one of many shapes that we know as sixths. There's sixth intervals between these two notes. So guitar players will shorten that and say, I'm playing sixths, okay? Um, and this outlines sort of a D7, or, an, or a, sorry, E7, or an E major, right? You've got notes, you've basically got the major third and the fifth, right? So you're using two notes to sort of imply a full E7 chord, right? So, and then it's staccato. As you can see, there's a little dot on the top of what the notes are on that second, that second uh, set of notes there, right? And so that means to cut it off quickly. And also we're sliding into it. You can see those slash uh, markings uh, moving up to the fourth fret of the G and, and high E. So you kind of slide into that and then cut it off like that. Okay. End of this, we've got some rests. And on the end of four, I'm going to slide into the E note, fifth fret of the B string. How effective is that, right? We're, we're jamming off an E7 chord and he just grabs the, the root note and just adds some vibrato to it. Okay. Okay. Ending off with a cool little uh, double stop lick right here. I'm grabbing the second fret of the D and G and then grabbing the second fret of the D and then grabbing the open G and B string and hammering onto the first fret. So that, that once again, that sort of outlines the E7, that part. All right, so cool little riff right here. Uh, you know, combining some sixths, dull stops, and single notes. And it, look how sparse that is. There's also like rests in there kind of thing, right? So uh, pretty cool, right? Nice little R&B riff there to work on this week. Excellent, excellent. All right, Sophia, it's been over a month since you were last here. Yes, it's been a while. I'm so glad you made it. Tonight, welcome, welcome. I'm, it's great to see you again. I also went to the Foo Fighters concert. It was Taylor's second to last show. In the first row, you were there. That is crazy. That is awesome. Wow. Cool, cool. Yeah, really tragic, sad about Taylor for sure. All right. Uh, exercise six. We are looking at some funky strums. Again, another song that I'm kind of working on this week is by the Atlanta Rhythm Section song called So Into You. I don't know if some of you are familiar with that song. Once again, another one that I was not exposed to growing up in Canada, but uh, have recently discovered and lots of cool guitar in that one too, right? So this is sort of the funky uh, strumming part of the proceedings tonight. And uh, we're also going to switch it up with the key. We're going to come up to F minor, F minor seven, key of F minor. Okay. And let me get my funk sound in here in the middle. All right, Jim Gregory knows it. Excellent. Okay, so that'll be coming on Guitar Tricks too. We're going to get that coming as well. Um, so I'm showing this sort of in two different uh, ways. Uh, the first one is showing the muted strums in between and then where to sort of press down on the chord uh, to make the, the sound of the chord. So let me just play this first bar. Uh, one more time. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, I'm not playing this right. Hold on. Why can't I think of it right now? This is crazy. Uh. There it is. <laughs> All right, slower. Okay, so a little bit tricky as I just showed you. Took me a little bit to uh, get into the groove of this one. So what's interesting about this is that 
the, the actual cord stabs, we call these staccato cord stabs, is that they're, they're all, it's, it's heavily syncopated. So it's not happening, you know, right on the beat. It's happening in between the beats. And what's even more challenging about this is that it's 16th notes. So we're actually strumming one, two, three, four. Okay. So <laughs> you got it. HH had to do it. Right. So we've got a down up, down up for every beat. One, two, three, four. Okay. So what you want to do for this is get the shape that we're going for, which is the F minor seven, barring down from the A string all the way up at the eighth fret, adding the 10th fret to the D, ninth fret to the B. Okay. Then we start in with the strums. One, two, three, four. Okay. Now we got to look at the rhythm up top and see when we're going to press down the chord. Okay. Because we want to keep this going. Okay. So we start off with two muted strums and then on the next downstroke, we're pressing the chord in, but then coming right off for the upstroke. Okay. You can notice that we're going to, you know, it's basically every two strums, uh, muted strums, we're going to press down on the chord. So if you think of it that way, okay. So for the first three of those, you've got two right after it that you're going to mute. So it kind of rolls over on itself. You're doing a down, then you're doing an up, then you're doing a down, and then you're doing an up. And on that second up, you're going to hold that out. And then just add up, down, up at the end of that. So. Right? A little bit slower. Okay. Up fast. See if I can do it. Okay. That's what we're going for. Okay. So. Holding the chord, but not pressing down, just holding the strings with the chord allows you to get that muted chicking strum sound, right? Now, what you need to do is just figure out what subdivision you're gonna press down that chord onto and then lift it off again. Now notice I've got this going the whole time as I Right? Even if I'm not striking the strings, I'm going to keep this motion going. It keeps me in time. So really try to do that. So then what happens is in exercise B, you can play the same riff without the muted strums. But I still recommend you got this going. So that one up okay so that one's tricky too because now you're not hitting the strings all the time so you got it right up fast <laughs> Cool, cool. So that's what that exercise is about if you're up for the challenge. After that, we've got the funky strum, uh, just the same strum, exact same strum with the mutes, but moving to the four chord. In the key of F minor, it's going to be B flat minor. And so we've got a different chord shape here. Okay, uh, oops, down here, sixth fret. This is B flat, B flat right here, curling my finger to mute the A string and then just barring down across the D string all the way up, sixth fret. Okay, B flat minor seven. Okay, add those strums to it. All right, a little bit slower. And then there's a little bit of a turnaround on the five chord in this song, and it's got a little bit of a different syncopation. It sounds like this. 
Okay, so we've got the C minor seven chord. <laughs> Dave, what's up, man? Good to see you. Celentano in the house, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for joining, man. Hope you're doing good. Okay, so you can see that we've got uh, the same shape as the B flat minor seven up two frets, uh, low string, eighth fret, and just alternating. So I've got the low string, and then I'm grabbing the upper part of the chord and then cutting it off and then getting into it again and letting it ring out. I'm going to repeat that again. So, All right? So that's that one. Right? That's that bar. So you can kind of put it together again as, as any kind of a blues, a 12 bar blues, whatever kind, kind of it is. In this particular song, it's not quite a 12 bar blues, but uh, you know, going from the one to the four chord and then up to the five chord. That kind of thing. <laughs> right on, Dave. I appreciate it, man. I hope you're well. All right. So, uh, couple left, everybody. We're blown through it. Uh, Exercise seven uh, came across a YouTube video that had some pretty cool hip hop ideas, and uh, you know this this is you know something that's not necessarily just for hip hop. It's just kind of a cool approach, right? So even though the uh, context of what sort of I came across and what we what I ended up putting in the exercise was to play over a hip hop groove. Um, it can work for any kind of, it's just a cool little guitar approach, right? So let's see, let's play it. Let's see if I can. There we go, first bar. Whoops, there we go. That's what it is. Some cool chords here, right? E minor seven. We saw that one earlier. Barring down at the seventh fret, adding the ninth fret of the D, eighth fret of the B. And you see my, with my arrow, sort of a brush down stroke or even a rake to give it a little bit of texture, right? So sort of a slower strum, like not quite, not super fast like that, but a little more kind of raking across the strings. And then just adding in the single note in the chord, the eighth fret. At the end of this, we've got a little bit of a triplet, eight, ten, eight on the B string. So adding a little bit of a melody to the chord. Same idea, moving chords now to D minor seven. Uh, no, D major seven. This is a D major seven, fifth fret of the. A string, you can just bar down with that if you'd like, but you've got the seventh fret of the D, sixth fret of the G, seventh fret of the B. D major seven, same idea. And ending off with a pull off with your pinky, seventh fret of the B string, pulling to five, so you wanna have that bar across the fifth fret, and then coming up with the pinky to get seventh fret of the G. You put it together, I think it's pretty cool. Okay. That's the idea with that one. Um, yeah, pretty cool. I thought it was really cool. And, uh, you know, it really worked to try and make like sort of a texture with those single notes, like kind of play around with the dynamics, even, you know, not, not every pick has to be identical, right? You can kind of give it a groove just by working the dynamics of Okay. Cool, cool. Hanging in there. All right. We always like to, uh, I always like to end off the, uh, the session, uh, when we're talking about rhythm guitar, uh, jazz rhythms, uh, this one, Fly Me to the Moon, 
famous Sinatra, right? This one's fun, got some great chords, and the strum is pretty straightforward, right? Just straight quarter notes, okay? Uh, what I kind of like to do here is... Uh, should have sort of transcribed it a little bit, but to actually to sort of lift off the chord in between to give it some texture instead of letting it ring out. Right, like that. Let's get like sort of a jazzy tone going. Yeah, what I meant to do is kind of cut off that chord a little bit in between to give it some texture. So. You want to think about like a jazz swing, so that would be kind of like a shuffle, right? You know, even a little slower. Okay, that's sort of what we're going for, but you can just keep it down. First chord, A minor seven. We looked at the minor seven shape with the root six, right? All the same fret, and you're just curling your finger around to mute the A string. In this case, we're in the fifth fret, so that's A minor seven. D minor seven. We saw E minor seven earlier, just down two frets. You got D minor seven, okay? G seven, I don't think we've done this shape yet. This is sort of the jazzy G seven with the root on the low string, and you curl your finger to mute the A string. And then you've got the third fret of the D and B string, and you got to get the fourth fret of the G string. It's kind of a tough grab a little bit. And then C major seven. Same chord shape as we had in the previous example for D, just down two frets, right? And you can see in that bar, it's two strums on C major seven. But then you lift your middle finger out, make sure you got the bar going on the third fret, and it becomes a C dominant seventh. Like that. Okay? So that top line sounds like. Whoops, I didn't do that. Try that again. Moving on to the second line of this example. We're on the last example, everybody. F major seven, root six. Okay, that's the first fret of the low string. You're curling your finger again to mute the A string, and then you've got the second fret of the D and G, first fret of the B string. Okay, everything else muted. Cool chord. Then we've got the B minor seven flat five. It's got that diminished sound, right? Second fret of the A and the G string, third fret of the D and the B string. Then it's the Hendrix chord, E7 sharp nine. Saw that, okay? Then we're gonna go to A minor seven, two strums, and then add your pinky in there uh, for the A7. Or you can, uh, let's see, how would we do it? Uh, quickly switch like that to get that. I'm going to just try my best. It's only two strums to try and get that pinky curl in like that to add that note. You're adding sixth fret of the G onto that chord shape to get the A7, right? Right, then it's sort of there's a modulation that happens that gets set up off that A minor seven, right? It goes from the one chord to like a five chord of the new key, right? Yes, the dreaded B minor seven flat five. Love it though. So now we're playing a new progression starting on the D minor seven. Back to G seven. To C major seven. Okay, then we've got E minor seven to A seven, so two beats each. Okay, back to D minor seven, back to G seven, C major seven. And this turnaround's a little bit tricky. The dreaded B minor seven flat five, going up to E seven. 
Okay, that's the C7 shape up so that the root's on the E note. And then that can take you right back to A minor 7. Okay? So the strum should be pretty straightforward on this one. It's more just the rich chord progression. This is a really great practice to work on these extended chords. We call these seventh chords and above, sort of these extended chords, uh, which you're going to hear in jazz and a lot of different other genres, but always in jazz, some sort of extended chord, right? I think it sounds quite nice and it makes for a great practice uh, for chords. And of course, lock it in with the groove. You got your metronome going, you got a little, little swing jazz drum groove going, all works great. All right? <laughs> Excellent. Well, thanks so much, everybody, for, uh, for hanging out tonight. I appreciate it so much. We'll be back on the acoustic next week. Uh, an acoustic workout, I believe, is what's on tap. Uh, so we will do that. And uh, and then the week after, I will not be here, but I'll, I'll mention that again next week. And we're going to take one week off, and then we'll be back the week after. So, uh, Chad, welcome back. I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you coming back, being part of it. Scott, thank you. <laughs> uh, HH, always have to have the printed version. Totally get that. Yeah, it's there's something about having it, having the page on the music stand or wherever you practice. I totally get that. You got to do what you got to do, all right? Steve, thank you so much. King50, thank you. Gerald, thank you. James, thank you. Back at you. Rusty, right on, man. Zane, thanks, thanks so much. Jim Gregory. <laughs> what pickups are these? Yes, these are Lawler's. Lawler, I don't know the actual models, but just like sort of the regular telly set that he has. And I love Lawler pickups, so this thing sounds great. I've also, you know, for you guitar geeks out there that are into gear, I got the special control plate that wires. It's not just a three-way switch, it's a four-way switch. So it actually adds, you can add the bridge going in series to the uh, neck pickup. So for example, here's just the bridge. And if I flip it all the way over to here, it'll blend both of those in series. So you kind of have sort of the, well, I actually find that's kind of a cool tone. Yeah both pickups like that, as opposed to the middle position, what would be the middle of the three-way, where they're sort of in parallel and kind of like, you get more of a phasey sound, right? Which is great too. When you put them in series, you've got a lot more low end and a lot more power, as opposed to just the neck pickup here. So it's a fun guitar for sure, man. Uh, thanks for asking about it. I, I love talking about that stuff, of course. Dennis, thank you. Glenn, happy Easter, everybody. Have a great weekend. Uh, all right, HH, thanks for joining each and every week. Appreciate it. Everybody, happy Easter. Have a great weekend. Have a great next week, and uh, hopefully catch you next Friday, same time. Take care, everybody. See ya. <laughs>